What's good guys, welcome to a new video and uh, this is a new series on my channel called Learn From The Pros and here with my first guest, Khalif Wyatt, my guy. Sam, appreciate you for having me. Nah, appreciate you coming on. Um, Temple legend right here for the people that don't know, played nine years overseas and uh, gonna learn uh, some tips and tricks from uh, an ex-pro. So um, for the people who don't know, what does a regular uh, practice day look like on uh, like an overseas schedule? Okay, so... Most places you're going to play one time a week, so it's going to be a lot more practices than you have games. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you get up, most teams are going to have two practices, especially earlier in the week. Um, going to lift, get up, lift, go get some shots. Um, hopefully, if your coach is nice enough, your first practice is not taped, <laughs> and you, uh, you just go in there and get some skill work in uh, as a team, um, get your body moving and then, yeah, come back later in the day for a full practice. So, um, you said it depends on where you are. Do you see, like, there's, like, really big differences within, like, for example, you played a couple years in Israel, but also in China. Would you say those schedules are kind of the same, or is it a little bit different from place to place? Yeah, so it's definitely different place to place. Um, for instance, when I was in China, it was more closer to the NBA, where we played sometimes three games in a week. For sure. So it was less practice. Um, but when I was in, you know, Israel, sometimes I played one game a week and yeah, just practice a lot more, a lot more two a days and stuff yeah. like that. So depends where you're at. Um, and also intensity level, I would say, of practice depends where you're at. Like sure. my practices in Israel weren't, were way less intense than my practices in France, for instance. Okay, okay. And uh, talking about all these different places, what would you say was the most surprising, uh, like, diff difference in culture compared to the U.S. of all the places you've played? Surprise? Uh, I guess I'd say I'd be surprised how many people speak English in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much everybody speaks English. I didn't know that. I was expecting a language barrier because um, before I was there, I was in China. Mm -hmm. So big, big language barrier. Nobody spoke English. Nobody even tried to speak English, um, but when I got to Israel, just about everybody spoke English. So going off of that, like I've heard some stories of people that played in China. How did it work for you being in China, obviously not speaking Mandarin or Cantonese or whatever the, the local language was where you were? Um, do you have a translator with you or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, so I had a translator. We had a translator on our team. We actually had two. One was assigned, we had two Americans on our team. So one was assigned to him, one was assigned to me. Uh -huh. Um, and he was pretty much on call 24 hours. Uh, he lived nearby, so like if I was going to like, even if I was going out to eat or McDonald's or something like that, he would come along. Um, so he was pretty much like a 24 hour uh, translator. Yeah, 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 and so also during practice and games, the word calls, the games so, are Yeah, so my coach was actually, he wasn't Chinese, he was, okay. Lith he was Lithuanian, okay. so he spoke English. So yeah, he was actually trying to help the Chinese guys uh, <laughs> understand what he was saying. So I was good as far as basketball.
And um, over your nine years overseas, what are some tips and tricks you've learned to communicate with people that speak a different language? Like, I've heard some people, you know, giving the thumbs up or whatever, like sign language. Right. Um, well, as far as basketball goes, you won't have to worry about language barriers. You can sure. go anywhere where they speak any language, and basketball is a universal language. Yeah, you're going to be able to. You're going to be able to pretty much get what you're what they're trying to say. Um, as far as locals and stuff like that, I would say just. Your teammates, lean on your teammates a lot because they're from there, they live there. Yeah. Um, so if you're lucky enough to have some good teammates, which I was, they'll, you know, give you the lay of the land and, and help you with at least the essential words that you, you're gonna need. And then um, maybe more a little bit more basketball specific. What were some of the biggest or one of the biggest challenges you faced um, playing overseas? Because you hear all these stories, like every place is different, obviously. But um, you know, a lot of people have to deal with some adversity at least throughout their career. So yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say my first trip overseas was going like so I'm from Norristown Pennsylvania I went to Temple University which is 20 25 minute drive I then went and played for the Sixers which is right in the same area Philly guy. and then I got cut and three days later I was all the way in China oh it was that quick yeah so uh, that was probably the hardest thing I did it was my first time ever being away from home for, sure. for a long stretch of time um, so it was hard it was hard called home all times of the day. Um, it didn't really affect me on the court. That was the one place where it was like, finally, like, I just played basketball. But everything outside of basketball was like hell for me yeah, no, initially. I get it. I mean, obviously, I get it. I've, besides, I'm from... besides payday. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so how would you say the style of basketball is in China compared to, for example, in Europe? Would you say there's a big difference or? Yeah, there's definitely a big difference. Um, China, I would say, is more, more NBA-ish, more points, more faster pace, a lot right. of scoring, uh, even less athleticism with the Chinese guys as yeah. opposed to a lot of places in Europe, um, where in Europe is going to be a lot more physical. It's going to be a, a lot more skill. It's so going to be a lot more, um, you know, tactical than in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then over the course of those nine years, you were overseas for nine years in different countries. Do you feel like any anything from spending those nine years overseas helped your personal growth? Like not basketball related at all, just as a, as a human being. I mean, I guess, you know, coming out of college, going to China all the way, like it's super far, obviously different culture. So how, what would you say that's the biggest uh, addition to you as a, as a person. Yeah, it helped me. I was, I mean, I was alone for, I didn't have a family ever overseas. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always alone. So one thing it taught me was how to be alone. Um, you know, so I got to find out who like, who I was, what I like to do. I sure. like to read. I like to take walks. Right. Uh, so I didn't know any of that stuff before I was thrown thousands of miles uh, away from my family. Yeah. Um, so I got to learn more about myself and things that I like to do outside of basketball because you'll see when you get over there, you know, basketball is only two hours of the day, three yeah. hours of the day. So you gotta find stuff to do for the rest of the day. I've heard that a lot actually. 
So what do you think um, is something that every athlete, not basketball specific, but every athlete, professional athlete should know, like a, a skill or a lesson you learned while being overseas for nine years? Like finding something outside of your sport to, to like, what, what would you think? Yeah, I definitely say um, pick up a hobby, whether it be, I mean, a lot of people play video games. Yeah. Um, pick up a hobby of video games. Reading was my, which would I've never done ever in my <laughs> life, including school and anything, <laughs> until I went overseas. Uh, I started reading and that, that was something that I learned that I liked. Um, but yeah, pick up a hobby. Um, stay in contact with your friends back home. Um, it's hard, it's hard. Um, Definitely with an hour difference, I, I know all about yeah, it. It's hard, but you know, be intentional about, you know, being, being there for your people even though you're away. Because, you know, when you go back home, you don't want it to be like, damn, I haven't talked to this person in 10 months. So sure. just try to stay in touch and, um, and yeah, pick up a hobby. And then the last question in, in this little um, segment, what do you think, um, what are some key factors that you should consider before you sign with a team? Like, what do you think, like, obviously, the money is one thing, right? But what are some things outside of the money that you look at and we're like, this is important for me as a player before I... Right. I, well, uh, I would... Me personally, I would always call a player who played for this organization before, even if it's not the same coach, just the organization. Um, how did they treat you? How was your living situation? Were they ever late with your payments? Um, I would want to talk to somebody who just recently played for that team. Um, that's something I always did. Um, and then second would be the coach. If they play for that, if the same coach was there, then cool. But if it wasn't somebody that played for that coach, um, how was he? Did he treat you fairly? Stuff like that. Um, so I would just say, reach out to people who played for that team before and get their honest opinion. That'd be the, the best advice I could give. Okay. And then now, a little bit more like fun questions. If you were to go back in time and um, speak to your 22, 23 year old self com coming right out of college, what piece of advice would you give yourself? I would tell myself that you can't play basketball and you can't make as much money and have the best career if you want to have without your body, without your health. Um, so I would be telling myself that you know, make sure, you know, nobody wants, you just have a hard practice, nobody wants to sit there and stretch or go to ice. Uh, you ready to go home, get in the shower and go home and relax. Um, but I would spend all that time stretching, ice, massage, right. treatment, um, nutrition. I would, you know, spend that time doing that instead of like kind of looking past it as like almost like a, like you, it's, it, it wouldn't be a choice. It sure. would be mandatory for me to have, take great care of my body and what I'm putting in it. For sure, that makes sense. Health is wealth. And I mean, if you're an athlete, that's, that's basically your tool. So, um, and then throughout your career, what's the best piece of, uh, throughout your career, what's the best piece of advice you've received from somebody? Hmm. Best piece of advice I've received from somebody. It's funny because I didn't listen, but I'll <laughs> give this, and I, I still give this advice to people. <laughs> play for as long as you can play. It's the best job in the world. Playing basketball professionally, sure. there is no job that compares to it. Um, you wake up every day and get paid to play basketball. Yeah. Um, so I always, I didn't listen. Uh, <laughs> I end up, you know, having a family and deciding, you know, transitioning to coaching. But even when I talk to like my friends who are thinking about getting into coaching or thinking about retiring soon, I always let them know. Play for as long as you can play <laughs> because this will, sure. this is. 
other stuff will be there. Playing won't. So that's the best advice I could give. Play for as long as you can. Okay. And then last question. What do you think or what do you consider is the, the biggest, the best moment of your professional career, like basketball related? <laughs> professional career, basketball related. So I want to say it was like my first or second year in Israel. Um, and we're in the playoffs and we, we're like a small level team in Israel. Um, in the playoffs, we played Maccabi Tel Aviv, who's a EuroLeague team, yeah, best team in Israel. For sure. Their budget probably was like 10 times our budget, if not more <laughs> than that. Um, and we were, it's a five game series and we were down 2-0. So I'm like, literally got my bags packed. Stuff is at the door. I'm kind of excited to be going home. Like, yes, it's over, we're about to lose, I'm about to go home. Long story short, we end up winning three games in a row and sending them home and uh, continuing to play. We end up going to the championship that year and losing in the championship. But right. that that series, winning that series was, was pretty cool because for the city that I was in, they never expected it to happen. I didn't expect it to happen. Sure. I was ready to go home and um, we got to play a little longer. That's what's up. So I have to unpack your bags and get right back to work. No, I was living out of my bag for the next <laughs> month or so. It was great to be the legend like uh, Khalif Wyatt. How's it, you know, feel, how's it feel to lose? At, <laughs> at, some, at some point, the torch has to be passed. So. I appreciate my guy for coming on the show. First guest. No Thanks for having me, brother. See you on the next video.